What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for a yet another Tottenham update. We've got some news to bring to you today, so let's get straight into it. And let's start off with Jetson Fernandez. It looks as like though his time at Tottenham is coming to an end as Dimazio has come out and said that he is on his way to Torino. Yeah, interesting because I thought Benfica would want him back. I thought they were going to use him, so um, it's quite interesting that They've decided to loan him out again um, to Torino. If that looks like that one's going to go through. But yeah, good luck to him. Uh, unfortunately, it ha really hasn't worked out here. But hopefully he, gets, uh, he can develop there in Italy and become the player who he uh, he wants to be. But unfortunately, yeah. he's not going to be here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. I mean, I saw in a couple of cameo performances, there was something there. I think there is a player in there. But I'm just not sure if he's going to be suited to the Premier League or not. Maybe not English football. Maybe He's never got a run of games. He's never mm. got a chance to prove it. Yeah. So um, I look, He did seem a bit lightweight, though. Yeah, he did. For, and for, especially for a midfielder who's supposed to be box-to-box. -box, he's supposed to be running all the time. He didn't seem to have that kind of... Uh, he didn't trust him in the centre, did he, Jose? He yeah. always put him out wide. He yeah. always consistently put him out wide, which is where he didn't want to be. So And that's why he came to Tottenham. He didn't want to be out wide at Benfica. Yeah, so maybe he has to bulk up a bit, spend some time with the gym, Jetson. That's my advice to you. But good luck <laughs> to you in the in, in the future. Exactly, Jetson. Take the advice of Simeon, like many others. Exactly. If you take it, then you'll go far. But uh, let's move on and let's talk about Ollie Skip. Because he was talking to Dan Kilpatrick last week of the Evening Standard. And it was quite interesting because apparently he was offered the chance to come back to Tottenham um, this month in January. And he turned it down uh, to keep his kind of development on track because obviously he's having a great season at Norwich. Um, it's important the reports that he, there were reports that Tottenham were looking at the option of bringing him back and Tottenham decided against it but apparently that's because Skip they left up to Skip and he said he would rather develop her, um at Norwich and quotes from his article um, last week probably backed up he said he was asked about how his time at Norwich has been he said it's been perfect whilst playing for Tottenham for 10-15 minutes off the bench was a dream this year has been brilliant for my development you can do all the training in the world around the first team but nothing replaces playing week in week out physically we can all cope with playing every th three days but mentally putting one game aside and moving on to the next one keep going and keep going that's the most challenging thing you don't appreciate it until you do it and that's the big biggest thing I've learned so he's really getting some good experience out there at Carrow Road um, it really is clearly doing in the world of good and I'm glad I think I'm glad you know, he's staying there I know he could have got some game time probably this uh, in the second half of the season if he came back but I uh, but I feel like it's best for his development um, to stay there for the full season really get to grips with what it's like playing every three three days especially in the championship and he'll come back a far better player yeah, and the way he speaks there, um, as a young player, he speaks beyond his years. He knows what's best for him, you know what I mean? Because um, a lot of players, it's very easy for a player like that, a boyhood Tottenham fan, to come back to Tottenham, be on the bench, be in, a, in and around the club that you that you love and you've brought up at. But for him to say that he wants to stay at Norwich and continue as a development, I think that shows um, maturity, first of all. And second of all, why um, I think he's very mature is because apparently from a lot of Norwich fans, they think he's been playing, he shows the maturity on the pitch well beyond his years so i'm really really excited for skippy to come back to tottenham next season yeah me too me too i can't wait let's move on as there's been a couple of injuries kind of big injuries in the premier league not tottenham injuries luckily enough but uh, not yet not yet yeah but first of all let's talk about jamie vardy uh looks like he's got his first big injury since he's started signed for leicester yeah it's actually quite unbelievable since leicester got promoted to the premier league back in 2014 he's uh, he's only ever missed uh, the to uh, four games in a season he's ever missed more than four so this is his first um big injury pretty much he's had in four years um which is very surprising considering all the skittles vodka he drinks but um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's going to have a hernia operation reported by Brendan Rodgers, who confirmed his press conference, and he's going to be ruled out for up to six weeks. So unless Leicester buy a striker in the next 10 days, which are probably unlikely, um, they're going to be having to do with their star striker for the first time this season and for in a while. So it's going to be interesting to see how they cope in the title race and uh, in the race for top four spots without Jamie Vardy, who's obviously such a massive, massive um, element to how they play with his runs in behind. Um, and it gives Hinacho obviously a run in, in run of games so we'll have to see how they fare yeah I mean obviously it was just as I put Jamie Vardy in my fantasy team literally <laughs> yeah, yesterday uh, so yeah I probably got what I deserved on that one put but Bruno in next yeah yeah he's already in no he's already in <laughs> okay. uh, nah, but Jamie Vardy um, I would just wish him a speedy recovery it's not nice to see anyone get injured at the end of the day well he's not in he's got a hernia operation yeah so I had one of those you had when one I was 11 them. years and old how long yeah. were you out for I was out of action oh I missed my sats so. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, big let, operation that one at 11 yeah. year old. But you, you were playing, were you playing back then? I was playing, playing in football? the playground, yeah. No, 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 I'm saying not Sunday uh, for Scrabble or no, anything no, like no, that. No, no, I was too young. Then, yeah. too young. But it ruled you out of the playground for a bit? It did, yeah. Three weeks, four weeks? <laughs> I can't remember that. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I wasn't as fit as Jamie Vardy, so he might come back a bit quicker than I did. Well, I've read on um, some expert well, not experts but you know twitter experts on twitter saying that it so takes not experts not at experts all. <laughs> at all but they're claiming that hernia takes around three weeks to kind of get over and get back into training and then you have to take another three another few weeks to get uh full fitness so it could be up to up to six weeks wow. but it's looks like a, a big loss for him. A big he, loss he, for him. if they if you, if you probably asked leicester which player would you not want to have a big injury they'll probably pick vardy because he's their main threat up front he's yeah. the one that really stretches teams because he doesn't have that same well threat. it's time for in and the to step up in it yeah we'll have to see how they how they fare i'm sure and maybe they'll sign someone on loan or something we'll have to wait and see but it's a big big injury for them Let's move on uh, to another injury, another massive injury in the Premier League. This time it's Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Um, uh, just as City started to really hit form, Kevin De Bruyne's got a big injury, a hamstring injury. Looks like he's going to be out four to six weeks as Pep Guardiola confirmed that today. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, I think the Vardy injury is a lot more detrimental to Leicester than De Kevin De Bruyne is to Man City. Yeah, because Man City, obviously, they've got a wealth of talent, don't they? They've got an absolute plethora of midfielders yeah. to come in. Um, you know, if, if he went off on the hour mark, didn't he, against uh, um, whoever they played midweek, I remember, Villa. Um, he went off on the hour mark, he was feeling his hamstring, and uh, at the end of the game, there were reports that he was going to be up to two to three weeks, mm. and now it's confirmed four to six, which, by the way, rules about the Tottenham game which is important, uh, which is a... not Unless a miracle big, happens, but yeah. Looks like it rules about the Tottenham game, but it's what, what, what's a bit frustrating is if the final hadn't been moved, he would have been out of the final, but unfortunately he's been moved, so why he's going to be fit for that, that one. Final? It's just so now, it, now it's looking at like why they moved it. It was really yeah, annoying. Yeah, but I said that as soon as they moved it. Yeah, it's true, you did say that. So, um, But look, let's move on. But obviously I'm just saying they've got Bernardo Silva, they've got Phil Foden, Gundogan. Yeah, of course. They've got so much uh, talent. But look, it is a blow. But it's not like not detrimental, uh, like it could it's be. It's not for like, uh, yeah. And considering the next three games as well are West Brom, Burnley, um, West Brom, Burnley, Newcastle, they're going to be fine for the next yeah. few weeks. But uh, luckily, could be out of our game. All right, uh, got some a few quotes to run through. First of all, let's start off with Sandro. Uh, then, if you guys remember Sandro, that big Brazilian lad we had in the middle of the park, I absolutely loved oh, him. I remember Sandro, surely. Uh, Sandro, <laughs> Sandro. <laughs> Sandro. Um, Tottenham Mots was Brazilian, you know. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so you want to give us the quote? Yeah, um, I, there was a really great article in the Athletic detailing his time. Um, I at loved Spurs. Him as a he at said Spurs. he said he he he, lo he lo absolutely loved it. The the big uh, the main quote um, that's been quoted around said, "I just found everything so beautiful at White Hart Lane. I love that place so much. I would have played for free if they asked me to." <laughs> that's definitely not true. Huh? <laughs> that's definitely that's not what true. He said. No, no, the quote is true. Well, wherever it's no, true, I know, but he definitely wouldn't have paid for free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably not. That's what he says. He says, uh, and uh, I read the article. It's really great if you've seen the if you've got the athletic go read it um but he was just saying how tottenham was the best time of his career he said he when he before he got that injury he was on top of his game yeah. he was uh playing week a week after one of the best sides challenging near that the top of the ruined League. his career and he said that he actually said um the injury shortened his right leg by a bit oh really yeah and he said he didn't even know that it shortened his right leg um for a few years down the line so he said he would be training all the time and he would, and and the calf muscles on his right leg were being overworked and he didn't know why what was going on and uh, he said re the doctors realized a few years later that his right leg had been shortened a tiny bit That's because nuts. because of that injury and uh, it, it meant they was putting a lot more pressure on his calf muscles wow. and that's why he kept getting constant calf injuries he said after that injury like kept leading to more and more injuries is he retired now he actually isn't he's now without a club he just left a brazilian team i can't remember the name but he just left it and he's now free agent so he's he's considering retiring he said he's not sure um but he said yeah he re he said he regrets leaving tottenham um a bit early uh but, but he was so impatient he wanted to get back on the field he wanted to start playing week in week out that he just at the time he thought it was the right thing to do but he said in hindsight it probably wasn't but he said he really looks back on that time fondly he said he actually he claims he could have moved to man city Oh, really? But he decided to stay at Tottenham because he didn't want to betray the Spurs fans, he said. That's what he claims. He said he could have got a lot more money at City. But um, he said um, he felt like he was betraying the Tottenham fans and he loved the Spurs fans so much. Or maybe he's making that up, but that's what he says. <laughs> um, that's what he says. And he says um, 
He uh, just really appreciated it. It was the best time of his career. Uh, he said about Harry, he talked about Harry Redknapp yeah. as well. He said um, Harry Redknapp was a great manager for him. And he said that he wasn't tactically the best, but he knew how to manage people and he knew what the right things to say to really motivate players so uh he was a really great manager for him and yeah it sounded like uh he'd had a great time as i just remember the shame. year leading up to that injury he was phenomenal he really that, yeah was. him and dembele were forming a great he was partnership absolutely phenomenal and that injury literally ruined it it, ruined it actually it ruined actually ruined i remember we were on course for top four uh, that season he was playing really well and then he got was that the season that Arsenal well, we were 12 points above Arsenal or something? well we did that two seasons in a row but um, it, it was, was AVB's first one. season yeah. yeah AVB's first season and he was playing really well and uh, injury at QPR is cruciate and it was actually quite uh, interesting because he said um, the cruciate ruined him and Van Dijk has just done his cruciate mm. in his knee as well he did it in his knee oh really they've done it in the same kind of very similar so I hope um, Van Dyke doesn't have the same fate as yeah, Sandro. I mean, yeah, definitely. But look, um, anyway, if any of you guys got any links to Sandro out there, we know mm. he doesn't have a club, so let's get him on the channel, guys. I'd absolutely I'd love, love to interview, to interview yeah, Sandro. Great guy. Uh, great guy. Absolutely would love it. But anyway, let's move on to some more quotes. This time, Jose Mourinho. He's been talking about our academy players. Yeah, so it was actually brought up in the press conference about um, the foreign player problem that we have. Yeah. And he was asked about how do we solve it? Um and he was talking about um he was talking about how we solve the yeah, that foreign player problem. He was saying the full full got here is um I'm not even thinking about repercussions in terms of the transfer window, but the, rea the reality is is that it was not easy to leave Gazaniga out, but no other option. And then he says, would be great for Joe Roden's development to play in the Europa League, but he wasn't involved in the squad. Um, but mo moving on, he was talking about our academy players. He said one solution would be to use academy players in your squad and get the young players in. But he said, um, he said honestly, I don't know if I should say this or not. The players that I feel are more talented in the academy are not the older ones. They are very young. We are speaking about kids of 16. We are not talking about kids who are 18 or 19. Let's say men um, that that just need the last push. I feel the biggest talents are very, very young. So, so mate, he's obviously so, talking about Divine and Scarlet. He's talking about obviously those young players, but it's interesting he's saying the ones who are older, he doesn't What's trust. interesting as well, because he was waxing lyrical last season um, about um, Sirkin, and he was saying he's going to be part of the squad. And now he's coming out with stuff like that. So, I mean, Sirkin must be thinking, what's going on here? Oh, well, yeah, he hasn't used Sirkin at all this season, has yeah. he? So that's a bit of a shame for him. Um, but um, Alistair Gold... Um, tried to clarify the situation. He said it, he's, he's most likely talking about the ones who haven't gone on loan, not not the ones who have gone on loan and are getting minutes. So he's yeah. he's not saying they're not good enough, but he's just saying the ones at the club at the moment who are available to pick from, the more talented ones are the younger ones and not the ones who are 18, 19. And, that's, uh, and he doesn't trust them as much. Or, or, he didn't say that, but he's kind of hinting at that. Mm. Um, and, that and, he, and he thinks they're going to be the real talent. So I thought that was an interesting piece uh, of uh, from the press conference well, that you said. Very interesting. Well, let me know your thoughts on those Jose comments on the academy players. Uh, uh, but he also, in the press conference, was talking about Danny Ings. Yeah, he said basically about Danny. He was asked about Danny Ings if there's any truth um, to him coming to Spurs. And he said basically his full quote about Danny Ings is, We have two strikers. We are not a team that needs a third striker because the third striker is, is Sonny. We don't need more than two. We have the best. We are happy with Carlos. Carlos is not is, is Benfica's player, but he is one that we are helping to develop and he is helping us when he is asked for. We are happy with the situation. Ings, I refuse totally to say any word on him because he's a Southampton player, but he's just saying that um, it looks like it's unlikely we're going to go for Ings in this current window. It's pretty clear from, from that quote. I think. I never thought it was likely anyway. Um, but yeah, he says he's happy with Carlos, but obviously I think in the summer, if he was given the chance to swap Carlos for Ings, he'll probably take that. Yeah, I mean, can you really see us signing Venetia for 45 million? Not right now. Definitely not. So, Definitely not. Even you know what? Even if he has a good second half of the season, I can't see us saying forty-five. We, we, it would have to be. We'd have to negotiate a lower fee. And even Danny Ings, I know his contract's running out in uh, a year and a half or whatever it is. Um, he'll cost still less gonna, than that. He'll, yeah, less, but not that much less. What twenty-five, thirty million? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, I, we can't get. We can't see us getting Vinicius for less than that unless 
Uh, he has a really bad second half of the season, then Benfica can uh, will have to accept a bit lower. But at the moment, um, I can't see um, us signing, taking up that option. Danny Ings, if you sign him for 25, 30 million, as soon as he signs that contract, he pretty much doubles in value. Yeah, you that's I mean? true. That's so true. I think it would be a great signing. I really do. I think yeah, Danny look. Ings, but I, I just can't see Danny Ings wanting to move to Spurs. But the thing is, is that... With Harry Kane there. But where, where if he wants to... Move, he wants to move to a Champions League club. Um, what are his options? There's Leicester, I guess, if they get there. He's there, that's a good option because Vardy's aging a bit. Liverpool, can he move to... I can't see him going back to Liverpool after he left. City, I think City will uh, probably set their sights a bit higher than Danny Ings. Chelsea, they've got... we we'll just spend He's big money. Tammy Abraham. I know, but they just spent big money on Werner. They've, they've just got, got enough big money. money. Don't, don't you worry about they them spending They have Tammy and Giroud. Um, they've got enough money to but spend But they might big. not be a Champions League club. They might not be, no. Um, United, they have Cavani, but he's probably going to be there for another year and they've got Rashford and Martial who can play there. So I can't see them. Yeah, but Martial might be on his way out. You never know. If he's on his way out, then maybe. But I think Tottenham could be the, one of the best options for him. Maybe. I think... Um, because he knows he's definitely second fiddle. He's going he's gonna to have a lot of game time and maybe he, he can play Carlos with Harry Carlos has hardly, hardly had a mini Yeah, but I think he, he probably trusts Ings a bit more than Vinicius. And, and in terms of Ings coming to us, I think he would rather go to Leicester and play week in, week out if Vardy's on his way out kind of thing. 32, 33 years old, Vardy. He's older than that, 34, I think. Well, there now. you go. Even even more so. So yeah. well, Leicester, But Leicester might not be in the Champions League. They might so not, but uh, also we might not be. Correct. So we have to see who's in the Champions League. But I'm saying... Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to... It's, look, I guess he's going to assess the situation at the end of the season. But I think out of those clubs, I think Spurs could be one of the better, better options. And even if he's saying he wants to join a Champions League club, I don't think he's that short-sighted to say, oh, if you don't qualify for Champions League this season, you're not a Champions League club, if you know what I'm saying. Because Leicester could always go and, and finish fourth with Danny, Danny Ings next season. And, uh, you know, Lacazette said he wanted to join a Champions League club and he's still yet to play in it. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it swings around about to these, uh, with these footballers. But, no, I agree with you. He might want, he might say Leicester's a better option. Um, but I think if, if, if Leicester don't want to go for him, I think we could be one of the better options. Maybe. We'll see what happens on that one. And let's finish off with Dimitar Berbatov quotes on Tongi. Dimitar Dimit, Dimit, Berbatov. Where is he? Yeah, here he is. And he's talking about Ndombele, and he's saying he's saying how much Ndombele has improved uh, this season. And he's re and he really likes to look at him. He says, um, talking about the goal. He says, did he mean it? Um, question mark. He, and he just laughs it off. He says he's turning into a smart talent and integrating into the team. This has benefited the whole team, and I'm sure Jose is happy. On the t Tottenham's title hopes, he says, for me, they're still in the mix of Leicester and others, but it's very tight at the top. The chase is going to be great to watch. Um, there's not too much stress on them um, to be mentioned as contenders, but they'll be playing better if they're not under pressure and could surprise people. Honestly, if you're, it's going to be tight until the very end. If you talk about United, City and Liverpool, but you can't underestimate Spurs and Leicester. Yeah, completely true. Spurs getting disrespected by the, the mainstream media all the it's time funny how, you in know, terms of title races. Look at, did you, I don't know if you I heard the commentary last night on the Liverpool uh, game when they lost 1-0 to Burnley. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're talking about, they go, as soon as the final whistle goes, they go, oh, and there's going to be a lot of eyes over from Manchester United and Man City and, and Leicester. Leicester. They didn't say Spurs. But they didn't say Spurs, even though we're only a point behind them with a the game in hand. Yeah, I know. I, I agree. And it's, it was interesting to see when, when Spurs lose a game, that's, that's, that's them done. But other teams, it's not the same narrative. But anyway, we'll see how the, how the season goes. And it's very tight. I agree with Berbatov. It's very tight at the top. And we're still in there. As long as we're within touching distance, we're still there. So we just got to keep plugging away. And especially if we beat Liverpool on Thursday, that really does open some doors. But we'll have to see. Have to see how it goes. But yeah, it's good to see Ndombele getting some more recognition. People um, seeing how he plays. Because I think he's had a great season. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing talent, Tonki and Dombele. That is it for the Tottenham update. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding any of the matters we spoke about. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.